In our last episode, we spoke about the myths around cancer and gained a general understanding of what this term means. We now know that cancer is not one thing. There are different types of cancer and each individual's journey with cancer is different from others. So let us understand a few basic things about a few of the different types of cancer and also look at two key things that help people overcome cancer. Hi there. You're listening to Unviral, the podcast where we tackle that dangerous combination of the two kinds of virality, misinformation about health. I'm Parvati Mohan, production lead at Factly, and this episode is part 2 of 2 on cancer. Surgical oncologist Dr. Geeta Kadayaprat specializes in breast cancer surgery. Breast cancer is the number 1 type of cancer among women in India. And while all types of cancer require lab tests for a diagnosis, there is something that people with breasts can do at home to check for signs of cancer. Dr. Geeta takes us through this and other important things we need to know about breast cancer. Even today, 70% of our breast cancers are picked up in advanced stages. So our challenge is to reduce the number of stage fours that we see and bring them to a stage two, and the number of stage threes to come down to a stage one. And that is possible only if women are aware of their own breasts. So breast self-examination, I would say, although very underrated in the West. is of prime importance for a population like ours where access to uh, screening mammograms is poor so therefore you should be doing a breast self examination every month the trouble is our women are so loath to touch themselves and it is only when the disease is so big that it is visible that they come to the doctor so getting into the habit of examining yourself once a month Three days after your periods are over in those women who are having their periods is very very important. Familiarizing yourself with your breast essentially means that you will be able to pick up an abnormality if it were to happen. And for those women who have stopped having their periods, they can possibly start uh, examining themselves on the first of every month or a day that coincides with their birthday or their anniversary. But essential idea is that you do it diligently and regularly. every month so this is a weapon that you have in your hand and this is what can bring about early diagnosis as far as breast cancer is concerned the other type of cancer that affects a lot of women across the globe and in india is cervical cancer dr geeta takes us through what causes cervical cancer who is at more risk of contracting it and most importantly the way to prevent it So cervical cancer is a different story because cervical cancer happens because of a viral infection which is the human papilloma virus but all those who get infected with human papilloma virus do not necessarily have cervical cancer it tends to be self limiting in most women washes out itself but in some where the environment is conducive especially for those women who have multiple partners whose local hygiene is not very good who have infections repeated infections who are immunosuppressed for various reasons they are the ones who are more prone to cancer developing in the background of a human papilloma virus infection but the good thing is the time taken for the infection to settle into the cervix which is the lower part of the uterus and then the cells transforming into cancer is a pretty long period so an investigation which is called the pap smear is a very simple test one has this uh, again misinformation that pap smear is a very difficult test a painful test that's not true it may be a little uncomfortable but if you were to learn to relax it's a pretty simple test and that test done every 3 years in those women whose pap smear turns out to be negative the first time round will tell you if there is anything wrong with those cells and you can pick up very early signs of transformation into early changes which can take another 5 to 10 years to go on to become cancer so that's how pap smear becomes very very important the other arm weapon in the in our fight against cervical cancer is the vaccine 
So fortunately, now we have a vaccine against the human papilloma virus, which has been tested in young girls ranging from the age of 9 to 26 years. But it can be extended for use for women up to 42 years. Best time is younger because your immunity is better then and you mount a great immune response against this virus. And uh, those antibodies can attack the virus if it were to come into your body and protect you against cancer in 80% of times. So this vaccine um, is to be given in three doses. And the best time to do it is obviously before sexual exposure happens. But even if you've had sexual exposure, the vaccine can happen up to the age of 40, 42. And uh, if you've had sexual exposure, you should combine it with the pap smear. We asked Medical Director of the Indian Cancer Society and Senior Surgical Oncologist Dr. Vinay Deshmane about the types of cancer that Indian men are most prone to. In a nutshell, this is what he wants you to know about it. When it comes to cancers in men, head and neck cancers, that's oral cancers, then cancers of the gastrointestinal tract, that is, you know, the mouth, the esophagus, the stomach, the colon, intestines, these are the common cancers. And as we age, it's prostate cancer. So from head and neck point of view, if there's any sore in the mouth, it doesn't heal again, an ulceration, a growth on the tongue or any of the oral cavity. If there is some difficulty in swallowing, from the lung point, cancer of the lung, which is also very common, especially in smokers, it's a cough which, which doesn't go away, unexplained weight loss. If you have acidity or dyspepsia or uh, burning acidity after the age of 40, we call it new dyspepsia after the age of 40, requires to be evaluated. Any bleeding from the lower end or vials requires to be evaluated. So all these things point out or can, can raise to a suspect listing of uh, cancer being suspected in an individual. Prostate cancer can be indolent for years and years and years. And unless you do a prostate PSA level, that's prostate-specific antigen blood level, which is now commonly being done in all these so-called health checks, can help you detect these cancers early. Otherwise, the prostate cancer is not something which is very easy to pick up. All the research seems to point to early diagnosis being one of the best ways to fight cancer, as it is easier to treat at that stage. Anecdotal evidence supports this too. But some people who have detected their cancer early opt for alternative treatments instead of going for formal medical care. So what are the problems that occur when such patients go back to the oncologist at a later stage after refusing their treatment in the initial stage? And how do the doctors deal with them at that time? Dr. Geeta shares her experience with us. So it is very unfortunate and it is very frustrating for clinicians and it is frustrating for the patient also. And we do realize that in our country, the patient is not the only stakeholder. She, her family, her extended family, everybody has a role in the decision that is taken eventually for the patient. And when they come back in an advanced stage, like I said, it is very frustrating. And I don't <laughs> hold myself back when I tell them, oh God, this is so frustrating because she could have had a much better outcome had it not been through, you know, she spent three or four or six months or a year I remember a young girl who had a stage two cancer. She she came with her husband to me and she was young and I suggested all the treatment that needed to be done. But then they did not come back. And then she came back after a year with a huge tumor in her left breast. She'd gone on alternative medicine and she had disease in the liver and the bone. So, you know, if you just want to break your head. I also sometimes think, you know, I was thinking possibly I did not do a great job convincing her that this is what needed to be done. So, you know, you have lost the battle even before it has begun. If somebody comes to you with a stage 4 disease, the chances that you'll have a long-term outcome is only 15%. So, uh, that is the frustrating bit, but we do deal with these situations. But then you have to do your best in that situation also. Dr. Deshmane adds weight to the case of early diagnosis leading to better outcomes for cancer patients and talks about the one key factor that can lead to increased early diagnosis and treatment. I think uh, awareness about cancer is it's very, very important. People should become aware. It's basically a disease of aging, although we do see some cancers in the young. And people should be aware that cancer can be treated very, very effectively and can actually be cured if detected very early. So being aware 
of the general symptoms of cancer and getting detected early and being treated effectively is the most important aspect. And the biggest challenge for any society is to make their citizens aware and make treatment affordable and accessible. But if you're, if people are aware, then you will detect it early. If it's detected early, it can be treated effectively with less aggressive treatments. That's very, very important. And when you, when you are less aggressive in your treatments, the side effects of treatments is much less. And hence, these patients actually have a far better quality of life than the ones who are treated very aggressively. So the biggest challenge is for any society to raise the level of awareness and to make detection, early detection possible in the community. Once that is achieved, I think that's the first step to bring down the rates of mortality. The earlier you detect cancer, more effective would be the treatment. And if it's more effective, less will be the death rates due to cancer. Like any other field in science, Cancer research has made significant improvements over the past few decades. Doctors today have more knowledge and tools related to the disease than their predecessors did. So, is medicine close to finding a cure for cancer? Dr. Geeta weighs in. So, being in a positive frame of mind is a huge plus. I am a witness to that because I run this breast support group in my hospital and I've seen my patients thrive on the kind of positivity that emanates out of that group. This feeling of isolation and loneliness and feeling singled out as the, that one person who's got cancer goes when they interact with so many other women who've had cancer and how they bounce back and live life much better than what they used to before cancer. The tips that they share, the positive vibes that they share, the kind of modifications that they brought to their lifestyle that they share the kind of things that they do to fill themselves with positivity that they share. All this gets, it's, it's a kind of hand-holding that not even a clinician can do because it makes more sense to a patient to hear from people who've been through the experience. I always tell my patients, you know, you have to take one step at a time. So don't think that, oh, it's going to be eight and a half months of torture or one year of torture. So don't look at it that way. Don't plan too much into the future. Just focus on doing one thing at a time. So if it is going to be surgery, just try and get surgery out of the way. Then we'll get to the next step. If it is going to be chemotherapy first, just focus on getting the chemotherapy bit out of it. You have to get into that cheerful space and keep chugging along and keep persevering, doing one step at a time, going through the difficulties of treatment. I know it's not easy because I know there is going to be a lot of loss of taste, fatigue, or there could be aches and pains. Or you wouldn't want to eat anything. You're nauseated. You feel sick all the time. The moment you feel fatigue, just drop everything and just go down, go down to your bed and just rest. Very, very important to pick up those signs when you want to just break free and just be by yourself. So just think of those, the whole treatment cycle as about eight or nine or months or a year that you just, it's just a small piece of your life. Don't focus on the uh, failure rate that your doctor has said. Talk about what is the success rate in the stage that I've come to you. And usually that is larger than the chances of failure. So just focus on the good bits and keep working your way through it. And um, lots of times patients have a very smooth sail. But it is not true of everybody. Every patient is different. And please don't compare your treatment with someone else who's been through that treatment. Every patient is different. Some people get chemotherapy first. Others get surgery first. All that is decided bases your disease. So basically, just focus on the treatment. Because you must realize that your goal and my goal at the end of it is the same. And that is to get past this disease and cure you of the disease. So that is a common goal that we are seeking. And whatever it takes to get there, we have to commit ourselves to doing it. Yes, cancer is scary. But what we gather from our conversation with Dr. Geeta and Dr. Deshmane and all the research available to us is that there is hope for people afflicted with the disease. In India, the top five cancers most common in men and women account for over 47% of all cancers. And all of these can be prevented or screened for or detected early, which can reduce the chances of death. Cancer research has made a lot of progress over the past few decades and continues to do so today. And we need to be tuned into this conversation as cancer can happen to anyone. And so, 
having the right information becomes crucial in the fight against it. As such, believing false information has many harmful effects. And when this misinformation is related to a health issue like cancer, it can literally be a life or death situation. And so, we encourage you to take the learnings from this podcast seriously and apply it to your lives and pass on the right information among your loved ones. As members of the non-medical community, what we can do in the fight against cancer and other diseases is to keep ourselves aware and stop the spread of misinformation. We'll leave some links in the description for you to read in more detail. But do bear in mind that no website can help you like a doctor can. So if in doubt, let a medical expert help you. Until next time, take care, stay safe and remember to unviral. Unviral by Factly is researched by Nandita Kalidos, written, hosted and produced by Parvati Mohan and edited and designed by Jyoti Jiru. Thank you for listening.